Hi everyone, I'm Vicki at creativenotionsquiltshop.com. In October, we had this beautiful pattern made for us to use this fabric called Homemade Happiness by Wilmington Prince. And this is what we made out of it, a beautiful apron, hot pad, and oven mitt. So today, that's what we wanna do is make this pattern. So stay with us and we'll get started. This beautiful pattern comes with full-size patterns that have been printed for you on great big paper. So it will be really easy for us to use them. We won't have to take the time to go have it enlarged or anything because it's all ready for us. So we've gone ahead and gotten some of the cutting done, all of the cutting done actually, and we're going to lay this out on this flannel board which I wanted to show you anyway, how to make it. It is just a big piece of flannel and it's covering just a piece of foam board. So um, all I did was use my stapler and I stapled it in. So it was really easy to do. It might be good for you to have a flannel board or a wall with a piece of flannel on it, or you can take a a tablecloth that's flannel lined and pin it up to your wall or use command strips and stick it to your wall because there's different rows that we'll be making so let's get started on that the first row has three squares in it so I'll put up three different squares and You'll probably want to mix them around after this. And then the rest of the rows have five in them. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that out. You'll put one here. I need some color. This fabric has reds, blues, all kinds of colors in it. It's just really a pretty line. Um, it's got some bandana fabric and some stripes and some flowers and it's a little something for everyone so let me go ahead and lay these out and I'll be right back so we'll take these three and using a quarter inch seam we will sew them so let me change direction of the camera and I'll show you that I'm using um, a quarter inch seam and I've moved my needle over because I don't have my quarter inch foot with me. And then just go ahead and sew them. And then add the third one. And what we're going to do is alternate on the press, pressing the rows. Uh, one we will press to the right and then the next to the left so that they nest up really well. And I'll show that to you in just a minute. So always keep a hot iron with you when you're quilting. It just makes it much easier. So there's the first row. Now I'm going to press all of my seams going this way. So I'll do that. I'm just picking one up off the pile and putting it down right on top of the second one and straightening it out and sewing it. Thank you. 
I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the rows, alternating the way I press them, and um, be right back. Now all the rows are done, and I've pressed, it, pressed them to alternate different directions on the back. So now we take this top one down and nest it to the next one. And um, you can use some pins if you want to, but it's really easy to feel. And you can see it nests really good. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew these rows together. gives you full size pieces and you can cut those out if you want to use them but I traced mine onto a piece of paper um, you can like open a brown paper bag or use some freezer paper or anything that you want to so I have my front of my apron put together and the instructions on the pattern tell you to measure in an inch and a half on each side of the top so I'm going to do that and then just make a mark with my friction pin and the same with this one so an inch and a half and then just about a quarter of an inch from the seam you can't really see that so a quarter of an inch from the seam right here make a mark because that's where your armhole is going to go. And the same on the other side. And then this is your template. And you're going to lay it right here and right here. So, so there we go, right along the edge there. And then I'm just going to trace it with my friction pan and go ahead and do that and then flip it over for the other side and I'll just kind of eyeball it a little bit and your your lining is going to be the same so if you want to put your lining underneath this um, cut them both at the same time and that'll make it easier so I've put my lining underneath and now I'm just going to go ahead and cut it cut out the armhole following the line I made with the friction pan to give the front of your apron its shape And there's not really a whole lot of waste but save what you have left over because you will want to use it for your hot pad so save all of your scraps you should have eight fat quarters in your subscription bag and you can make all of these projects with those eight fat quarters Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim up the, the lining to this and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, everybody, I accidentally skipped a step and you know, every project has to have a mistake in it. This one was really easily fixed. Um, after you piece your top and then you cut out your armholes, edge stitch on both sides of your seam and that stabilizes your seam plus it looks super cute well i had already put on this pocket and that's okay i just stitched right to the pocket here and here and then started again down here it's an important step and you really should do it so i'm going to insert this where it needs to go and then we'll talk about putting on the back again the next thing we're going to do is 
make the pocket. So I'm going to take my apron and my lining apart and set my lining aside. And then you have a front piece and a back piece. So just put your back, your back and your front piece together, right sides together, and then sew from the center out and then all the way around or this way all the way around and leave an opening here on the top of the pocket. Okay, now snip away your corners and make a, just a few little snips, being really careful not to snip into your seam line or else that will make a hole in your pocket. So four or five. Okay, now reach into the hole that you left on the top and turn your pocket right side out. And poke out those corners with your fingernail. And then take it over and with the hot iron, press it and straighten it out so that it's shaped like your pocket should be. I have this tool that's just very useful when it comes to straightening out um, seams and especially curves. So it has a pointy end and then it has a rounded end. And you put, put it inside where you want your curve to be and you can just really easily smooth it out. And then it's easier to press. So I'll tell you where you can get that in just a moment. Now top stitch the edge right across, right. Now edge stitch. And you can use a longer stitch if you want. Closes up the seam for you. Closes up that little opening that you made. Okay, now it's time to put it on our apron. All right. Okay, so you'll choose whichever side you like the best and it's going to go three and a half rows down one two three and a, about a half and then center it in the in the inside of these two blocks right here and pin that in place and then you're going to top stitch all the way around it using a, about a quarter inch stitch, a quarter inch seam. Not really a seam, is it? Anyway, you're going to top stitch around it. Okay. So I'll do that and be right back. I've top stitched all the way around. And then when you get through, you can see in the corner there, I've done another little stitch just diagonal to help hold it, hold the corners and I did it on both sides. That looks pretty good. Okay, on to the next step. To prepare the facings that are going to be on your um, the, the back or the inside, the lining of your apron, you have 
this piece, which I went ahead and copied onto another paper, and then you should have enough of this fabric that we sent you to be able to cut out two. Um, with right sides together, cut them out so that they're mirror image. Now, I've gone ahead and folded under the top and the bottom and then all the way around. And there's no need to stitch this right now because it's going to go right here about a half an inch from the top and about a half an inch from the side. Um, and then I'm going to pin that in place. Then leaving this raw edge open the way it is, I'm just going to sew this edge here, not across here because that's where we put our our tape here, our twill tape. And that's the cording that will work for the, the tie and the neck. So go ahead and pin it in place and then just sew right along this edge right here. And I'll go do that. Using a piece of scrap material or a ribbon or some leftover twill tape, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and use just a piece of fabric. Fold one side in halfway, then fold in the other half to meet in the middle and give it a press. And then fold this piece in half and press it. And then take it to the sewing machine and stitch right across here and that will give you a tie that you will need to put on the back of your apron and i have one made right here that i've already done and i'm going to put it just like this let's see just like that and i'll show you what i'm going to do next i'm going to attach this right here and i'm going to go ahead and just do a little stitch right here to hold it in place Then placing, sorry, placing right sides together. You'll take your apron panel that you've done and your backing and put them together, right sides together, and then pin and pin all the way around. Be sure to leave a, about a three inch opening on the side or on the bottom so that you can turn it after you've sewn it. So go ahead and sew all the way around and then leave an opening so that you can turn. Okay, I've sewn all the way around and left an opening on the bottom right here. Now, because there's a curve right where your arms are, we need to take a few snips in there and just to give it some ease. So you'll do that on both sides. Be careful not to cut into your seam. Okay. Now you're going to reach up inside and turn it right side out. Before you do that, trim your corners to so that there's less bulk on the corners. I think these scissors are not the best. Okay, now reach in there and just pull everything through. And then use use your turner, not your turner tool, but your this tool is what I have. And it's called a point turner and seam creaser. And I have several of these in the shop if you're interested in them. Um, they just work so nice. The curved end works great on curves and the pointy end works great on corners. 
And as long as you don't push too hard, you won't go all the way through. So, makes a nice crisp corner. And right there is our little hook, little um, thing that we can use to hang up our apron. I kind of remember my mom wearing an apron. It was only a half apron though. Back in the 50s and 60s. Well, the 60s. I guess I'm dating myself because I don't much remember the 50s, but I do remember the 60s and 70s. And I remember all the ladies wore dresses and everything was a lot cheaper then than it is now. So now go ahead and press this really flat. I've pressed it and gotten it ready. Now we just need to do a quarter inch top stitch all the way around and that will close off this seam right here where we turned it. So I'm going to do that right now. Now we're ready to um, thread the twill tape around through the casing. Before you do that, fold it over two times and sew it. And I'm going to go ahead and thread that through as if I had sewn that. Um, so all you need to do is get a pin and thread it through your uh, twill tape. You can use ribbon or you can make something, you can make a cording. Um, now go ahead and flip it around. You're going to need about three yards for each apron that you do. So this will go through this casing here. We start at the side and go toward the top and then just pull some of that through and leave leave a tail for your tie okay now you're going to leave a loop to go around your neck and then thread this back in through the casing And there you go. There's our apron. Very simple and very pretty. Turned out really good. I hope you've enjoyed making this apron with me today. I have the pattern available on my website at www.creativenotionsquiltshop.com for a pretty low fee considering all that you get. And I have all of the fabrics available. So anything that you could possibly want to make out of this line is going to be adorable. Um, I'll be back in just a little bit and we will make a pot holder and an oven mitt out of what was left over. So watch for that video coming really soon.